Hello and welcome to Mr. Peacock Square Plays of week number 14. Football against the number coming to you one final last final time in 2015. Folks, it's been a good season, uh, I guess. Uh, well, you know what? It really hadn't. I mean, I, I didn't enjoy the Georgia season as much as I thought that I would. And, um, you know, that happens. That's what you get into. And uh, we are skirting right now on the edge of profitability uh, for our wagering section of the 2015 season. So, um, real quick to recap last week, two and three. Uh, South Carolina catching 17 against Clemson. That was a very solid play on my part. Uh, Alabama minus 14 and a half against Auburn. Some might consider that last touchdown that Derrick Henry scored to be a meaningless one. Mr. Peacock did not, and Alabama covered. Uh, our five-star lock of the month was a five-star flop of the month for sure. Uh, Tennessee and Vanderbilt under 41 points. Um, that's probably the worst pick that I've had all year long, frankly. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time going into that. And then finally, uh, the Florida Gators catching two and a half points at home against Florida State. The game was really closer than 27 to 2 would indicate, but um, there was never really a portion of that game when I thought that Florida was going to cover once it kicked off. So uh, here's the deal we're sitting now at 27 and 28 on the season. I'm picking four games this, this week. We've got a five star lock of the month because we are in December. If we run the table this week, if we go 5-0, and we will finish over 52.5% and make money on the college football season. Anything other than a 5-0 and week, we will finish the season in the red. It can't be having that. So, folks, we're going to get started off in exciting action. The SEC Championship game just down the street from here, kicking off at 4 p.m., folks. Hold your nose and do it. The Alabama Crimson Tide minus 17.5. Listen. There's a big part of me this morning. I've been on Alabama laying the points for a long time in this one. Um, and, and I've been saying for a long time Alabama's going to win this game by four touchdowns. Okay. Um, this morning I got to thinking about it with Florida's defense, with with Antonio Callaway who can stretch the field a little bit, and with Derrick Henry carrying the ball about 83 times last week against Auburn. Um, I, I thought, you know, this might be a spot where Florida's going to play the thing close. And then I got to thinking about the history of the SEC championship game. Folks, this thing is usually a blowout, okay? In fact, the favorite is 6-1 and one against the spread in the last seven. Really, the only competitive game that's been played in the SEC championship uh, over the last seven years was our game against Alabama. The rest of them have, have been, you know, double-digit wins for one side or the other and, and frankly haven't been all that competitive. I guess the 08 game between Bama and Florida was before Florida pulled away there late. But my point is, though, is that the chalk usually fares pretty well in Atlanta in the SEC Championship. It, it's, it's a weird environment in there with, um, you know, with well, first of all, I mean, they don't really give the fans that many tickets, which is a whole other thing. But, I mean, there's always a lot of noise at, at any time uh, in the thing. It, it's a very intense environment. It's a very emotional environment. And I think that the team that goes out and seizes the momentum early is usually able to really ride the wave uh, in that one. And whoever, especially whoever uh, seizes the momentum early in the second half, is typically able to do that, too. Uh, really, really like Bama laying 17 and a half for those reasons. And that's why the Alabama Crimson Tide are going to cover that number. Game number two, we're going to Charlotte, North Carolina, folks. I'll be there next weekend for the Falcons and the Panthers and can't wait. But this weekend, there's a football game being played between the Clemson Tigers and the North Carolina Tar Heels. And this is a five-star lock of the month. This is it. I guess it doesn't really matter which one I make the five-star lock of the month since we have to win them all anyway, but I'm doing it for this one. Folks, I like Clemson UNC over 67 and a half points. You think there are going to be a lot of points scored in this one? You're that gum right there will be. UNC can really score. They don't really play a whole lot of defense. Clemson can really score as well, and Clemson's defense has been questionable. Um, outside of the Miami trip, Clemson's defense has been very questionable, I feel like, away from Clemson. Um, I think both teams are going to get into the high 30s in this one pretty easily uh, or more. I'm, I'm looking for, you know, 45 to 38, something like that. If you were a psycho and stuck a gun to my head, I would like Clemson laying, laying the points, but I think the over is definitely the safest play on the entire board this weekend. Game number three, folks, we're going to Indianapolis, Indiana. I have not been there and have no plans to go. At 8.15 p.m. Eastern, I like the Michigan State Spart Sparty laying three and a half points against Iowa. 
That's a narrow number and it kind of bugs me a little bit, folks, but I think that the lights are about to get way too bright for the Iowa Hawkeyes, who really have not played anybody this whole season, really have not beaten anybody this whole season. Um, this will be the third time, actually, I bet against Iowa on the year. Uh, so this is a rubber match uh, with that also. Um, but, you know, I just I, I think Michigan State is really kind of, and I hate using this term, but I, there's something special about this Michigan State team. And, um, you know, a couple years ago when they played Ohio State in this game, I, I sat right here in the studio and I told you, Ohio State's dream and mission at that point was to win the national championship. All Michigan State wanted to do at that time was win the Big Ten, okay? It's a little bit different for Michigan State now. Their dream is on the playoff. Their dream is getting to the national championship, and I think they're going to do it. This is a really, really good Michigan State team. I think I've undersold them a little bit myself this whole year, but I'm looking for an easy 14-point win for the Michigan State Spartans on Saturday night. Game number four. We are going for the first time this year, and by definition for the last time this year, to the National Football League, where at 1 p.m. Eastern, 12 p.m. local, I like the St. Louis Rams catching five and a half points against the Arizona Cardinals. So St. Louis is a perfect 3-0 against the spread versus the NFC West. St. Louis also has the number eight ranked passing defense in the NFL. Now, why is that important? Because Chris Johnson, who I always thought was a different Chris Johnson from the one that played uh, for the Tennessee Titans. It turns out it's the same guy. Uh, that Chris Johnson for the Arizona Cardinals out for the rest of the year with a uh, broken fibula. Um, I think that Ellington, their uh, backup running back, is a little bit banged up as well. St. Louis, or uh, excuse me, Arizona's coming off a very physical game last weekend against the San Francisco 49ers. Back-to-back -back road games for the Cardinals. St. Louis won this game earlier this year in Arizona. Um, I know the St. Louis haven't been playing all that well here of late, but I think they're going to get it back on track on Sunday afternoon, and I'm looking for a good, good solid day for Todd Gurley. Um, Arizona's going to be forced to throw the ball, I think, a little bit more than uh, perhaps they would like to, and that plays right into the hands of the St. Louis defense. So take the St. Louis Rams and our only NFL pick of the entire year, catching five and a half points at home against the Cardinals. Turning down our mailbag, this week's letter comes to us from Sam from Rogers, Arkansas. And Sam writes, do you have any thoughts on the Mark Rick fire? Well, yeah, obviously I do. So real quickly to read, what? He asked a question and I answered it. He should have phrased the question better. I mean, I answered his question. Real quick to recap. Folks, we're getting the ball started. No, not really early. 4 p.m. Eastern. I like the Alabama Crimson Tide in the SEC Championship game laying 17 and a half points against the Florida Alligators. I like the Clemson Tigers and the North Carolina Tar Heels in our five-star lock of the month playing a football game over 67 and a half points. I like the Michigan State Spartans laying three and a half points against the Iowa Hawkeyes. And finally, in exciting NFL action, I like the St. Louis Rams catching five and a half points at the Edward Jones Dome against the Arizona Cardinals. So I wish you the best of luck. And folks, maybe you'll see me next year, maybe you won't, but know this. The square plays, as I said last year, lives within all of us. It's bigger than all of us, and as long as we keep it right here, it doesn't matter if I come back next year or not, because we'll always have this together between us, and that's what's important.